Okay, we're going to get into some vector stuff, so we need to review. Again, this is complicated stuff, so I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. So we have vectors A, B, and C, and this one, remember, I'm drawing it going into the paper so that we can describe three-dimensional vectors uh, as uh, and draw them. So, of course, we can add vectors, we can subtract vectors. I can multiply a vector times a scalar, but how do I operate two vectors to each other? Well, we've already seen one way. I have this, A dot B, the dot product. This takes two vectors, A and B, let's use those same two ones, A and B, I'll put them right next to each other. And there's some angle between them. The dot product of A and B, I can do it two ways. If A is equal to this, AX, AB, what the heck am I doing? AY, AZ, and B is BX, BY, BZ has components. Then A dot B is just going to be the product of the components added together. So it'll be AX, BX, plus AY, BY plus a, z, b, z. So you get a scalar answer. That's important. Another way to do this, a dot b, is a the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them, if you know that. So those are two ways to get the dot product, also known as the scalar product, because it, it's a way of operating two vectors together. See, I'm doing this to show you they're operating together and gives you a scalar answer. Okay, there's another uh, vector operation called the cross product. A cross B equals C, and some other vector. Yeah, okay. So this is a way to operate A and B and get a vector answer. So you can get this by components, but I'm not going to ask you to do that uh, right now. Uh, but more importantly, C is perpendicular to A and B. And that makes this inherently a three-dimensional operation. So let's, and the magnitude of C is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. Okay, so how do we deal with cross products? Well, Again, it's a three-dimensional situation. So let's take the vector A and the vector B, just as I have up here. So what vectors are perpendicular to both A and B? Well, there's only two. There's one that comes this way, like that. That's perpendicular to A and B. And the other one is the one that goes into the paper. So I have this coming out and that coming in. Both of those are perpendicular to both the vectors, and those are the only two. So how do we choose? We use the right hand rule. So you take your right hand and you let your right hand fingers cross through vector A and then B. And see how my thumb's pointing in the downward direction? That means that this is the direction of the vector product A cross B. Okay. Don't try to do it with your left hand, it's with your right hand, and that's just by convention. But it does depend on the magnitude of A, the magnitude of B, and the sign of the angle between them. Now what if I have this, A and B, like that? Well here's a vector that's perpendicular to both those, and this one, and this one, and this one. There's actually an infinite number of vectors that are perpendicular. However, what's theta? Theta is pi. Sine of pi is zero. So it doesn't really matter. We get the zero vector in that case. Okay, so I apologize for vector operations. We're going to do this cross product in Python because it, it allows us to calculate things. And we're going to use this cross product in the definition of the magnetic field due to a point charge.